Hello, this is a audio check, just making sure everybody can hear me. If you can, just please uh, type in the chat, uh, hello, yes, um, check mark, thumbs up, whatever works. Hello, my name is Christopher McCabe. I am an applications engineer.
just doing another audio check, making sure everybody can hear me. Um, if you could respond, just say hello, uh, yes, in the question box, please. Thank you for clarifying that. All right, just for Bibles, uh, about another minute or two, and we'll go ahead and begin. Hello, my name is Christopher McCabe. I am an applications engineer at Unitronics. This is Unicloud getting started with the basics of Unilogic. Unicloud is the complete no code IIoT cloud platform for OEMs and machine builders. UniCloud allows you to collect metrics and data to display for users in a format of your choice. I'd like to start with some terminology that will help better understand your UniCloud experience. An asset type is the application at hand. What will consist of the asset type is the telemetry that is being passed from the controller to the cloud interface. This data is then displayed in a format of your choice on defined dashboards that allows navigation to different areas of the interface. An asset 
is the actual machine that is running in the field holding the asset type that has been created. This asset will consist of a PLC. The PLC is validated by the serial number on the cloud account, which then allows remote access telemetry to be passed and also the ability to incorporate a router for internet connection. An organization is a structure that is created for the cloud account that allows users to fall under certain categories for access to specific portions of the account. Machine builders and channels allow devices to be added or subtracted, which then consists of the data that is being collected at the cloud level. The end use customer will then be assigned access by these channels in order to gain access to certain portions of the interface that shows data that pertains to their needs. The organizational order structure determines what users have access to what within UniCloud. You'll see here on the right an example of a potential structure where assets are added to be able to pass telemetry or be able for remote access only based on the credentials that that particular user has. The Unistream has the ability to interface with the cloud directly without the mandatory use of a router as long as it has internet connection. The controller will be able to see the cloud and the cloud will be able to see the controller. If the router is giving you your internet connection, it can be used in this case, but there is no actual internal router setup for a Unistream to ultimately have access to the UniCloud or vice versa. The machine builder is going to log in to the cloud account and then have the ability to design dashboards and or delete users and also be able to determine performance, service needs, and maintenance needs based on the metrics that are being collected by the cloud interface. Dashboards are what you use to display this information for users who have access to the account. The dashboards incorporate navigation to get to and from certain areas of the cloud account and based on the permissions that you have or the accessibility that you have. You may or may not be able to see certain pieces of the entire dashboard configuration. One of the main features that the UniCloud offers is data presentation. The ability to fully customize what is being shown on the dashboards in colors and configuration of your choice is a very powerful tool. Also, the analytical resources that you have allow you to pull in aggregated data and display as needed for the users who it pertains to. Asset management allows the ability to add, subtract, and adjust any piece of equipment that is connected to the cloud account. Asset management also allows monitoring of the assets over different protocols. Organization management allows the cloud account to be configured and structured as needed. Whoever needs admin privileges can be assigned these capabilities. Whoever needs to be limited to certain areas of viewing can also be configured. These settings are fluid and can be adjusted as needed depending if somebody joins the company or leaves the company. These are not set in stone. Secure remote access is also available in the form of web service, VNC, and VPN. I will cover VNC shortly. I would like to take VPN one step further. VPN 
is able to create a secure tunnel into the controller through the cloud interface. If a project or firmware needs to be updated or changed, you have the ability to use VPN to get a secure connection through your cloud account and to the controller to perform these tasks. When it comes to dashboard building, the interface is fully customizable. Widgets are drag and drop and code lists. You have the ability to select the data that needs to be displayed and how. When implementing widgets, you have a number of drop-down selections that allow you to choose the properties necessary to show the information as desired. Dashboards also are multilingual. Any dashboard that is created in English can also be converted to Spanish, French, and so on, depending on what users might be interacting with with the dashboards that are created. Last but not least, but also most importantly, the interface is completely secure. You must have a valid username and password to even enter the accounts. In order for your assets to be added to the cloud account and then be recognized by the dashboards, the communication is certificate based. MQTT is a very secure protocol that is used to pass the telemetry to the dashboard. What UniCloud offers is the ability to boost efficiency. Using the analytical tools at your disposal, you have the ability to create maintenance schedules, top performance finder, and other user-defined tools that allow you to guarantee the production at certain sites your machines are installed on. Fast commissioning, because no code and because the setup is so easy, you have the ability to add devices to your cloud account and access them immediately. You are given full control with UniCloud, remote access to organizational structure. UniCloud allows you to go live in under 30 minutes. This means that you have a fully integrated IIoT solution that is immediately ready to tell you the status of machines and pass vital data. Along with the existing units that are in the field that can be added via a subscription, we also have a new Unistream available that is a C model controller that comes with a built-in five-year subscription that begins when connected. This allows for 200,000 tags per month. No additional hardware is required, and this is Unilogic-based configuration from the software to the cloud. You do have the option of adding a UCR router that can go over mobile connection, Wi-Fi, or a wired connection. Once the controller is connected to the account, the subscription is, is enabled and therefore gives you built-in cloud capabilities. All that is needed is dashboard creation beyond adding that asset to the cloud accounts. We currently offer a three months free trial subscription plan for any new users. This is available for all subscriptions. There's an unlimited number of PLCs that can be connected per customer, and you can experience the unit cloud with no payment required. We are also offering a free secure remote access until the end of 2022. All you have to do is register your organization, connect your PLC, and you're ready to go. Starting in the year of 2023, we will require that this be a startup subscription. You'll see on this slide that configuring machines, connecting the PLC, building the dashboards, and managing access is done in minutes. This allows machine builders to analyze metrics and KPIs, which will allow you to improve performance, increase revenue, and always know when a machine is in need of maintenance. This is all done with no code and no previous cloud expertise required. UniCloud truly does have it all. Built-in cloud infrastructure, 
interfaces and functionality that allows you to achieve maximum efficiency. I will now begin our portion with the Unilogic on showing you how to set up the Unit Cloud with a PLC Unistream controller. I will be using the 1.32.98 version of Unilogic to demonstrate how to sync to the Uni Cloud. What I would like to show you are the steps necessary to get a controller to the point that it is cloud accessible and able to pass data. Now, before you can start using UniCloud for the first time, you must take the following actions. In Unilogic, you're going to enable your project for UniCloud. You'll then sign up or sign in if you have already made an account. You'll then go in and create an asset type. You'll include any data or alarms that you wish to make accessible on the cloud. Next, you will sync the asset type and download the project to the PLC. In UniApps, we are going to activate UniCloud in the PLC, and on the cloud account itself, we will make sure all the legwork is taken to validate the serial number and ultimately build dashboards. First and foremost, in the project, we must adjust the panel Ethernet settings so that the cloud is able to recognize the PLC on the internet. Navigate to your Solution Explorer under the PLC Communications, drop it down, select Physical, and select Panel Ethernet. This is where you will configure your IP scheme, including the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. You will also need to set up and add a DNS server so that this way we can communicate out on the network. Go ahead and enter 8.8.8.8. .8 this is Google's DNS and should always be recognizable. You'll then want to enable VNC. If you navigate back to your Solution Explorer, you will find that there is a field labeled Password Management. It is towards the bottom. Go ahead and select that. And in the middle, you'll see something called VNC Server Working Mode. Please change this from disabled to either enabled no password or enabled strong password required. This is going to give you the capability to allow remote access between the cloud and the controller. If you wish to control the HMI either on a dashboard or device management, the VNC will need to be enabled since this is a vital step. Now that I have configured the Ethernet settings and have enabled VNC, I can enable UniCloud. Go to your Solution Explorer, select UniCloud, and click to enable integration. You are prompted to start by logging in. If you have not signed up for an account yet, choose this sign up link right here, and you'll need is a valid email address, a name, company name, and location to begin. You'll be sent an invitation email, which you can then set up your login credentials. Once you have entered these credentials, use them to sign in to your account in the software. I will go ahead and log in. Once logged in, you are prompted to create an asset type. Go ahead and click on the plus sign here. The organization name that I have selected when I created my account is called Unitronics. If you can remember the application that will be running in the particular asset we are adding to our cloud account. I am going to name this asset type Unitronic Cloud Webinar. Select Create Asset Type. In the software, you will now see your organization name, your asset type name, the status being draft, which means it has not been published yet. We can still make changes to what we want available in this asset type. 
and we can begin to configure what information will be passed as telemetry. If we expand asset type under Unicloud Solution Explorer, we can choose tags. Choose the plus sign to add a tag and select or create which tag you would like to pass on as telemetry. In my project, I am manipulating a value with logic so that we can see it update on the cloud interface. I will select the current value, an integer value that was set up earlier in for the project. You will see my usage count increased to one. The usage count is the total amount of bytes in the selected tags, and it is the basis for calculating what subscription you will ultimately need for your application. I am then going to select the alarm under asset type in the Solution Explorer, select the enable alarms for UniCloud, select alarm group one, which will highlight alarm one. I only have one alarm configured currently. I'm going to pass this along with my current value tag as telemetry from the controller to the cloud. I am now going to select the remote access tab. Go back to your solution explorer and select it underneath alarms. You will need to check the box remote access control enabled. Select the asset type in the solution explorer to refresh the asset type. I'm then going to sync my asset type to the cloud. I will select the button here at the top. that says sync asset type. Anytime that changes are made to the asset type, you must sync the asset type so that the cloud and the project both recognize that the same tags are being passed. This is very vital. I am then going to download my PLC project by going to select PLC at the top, select the drop down for download, and select download all. Now, this is a very simple implementation of what the cloud is actually capable of doing. Depending on the telemetry that is needed for users to be able to view and monitor more and more tags, can be added to your asset type telemetry list. For example, if your machine is tracking the number of runtime hours, these runtime hours can be passed to the cloud as telemetry, and you can use this along with the analytical tools that you have at the cloud level to determine a predicted maintenance schedule, something like this, that can be very valuable and anybody who has access to that particular information on the cloud, let's just say if you have a number of people who would be in the field performing maintenance, everybody who can log in and see that the cloud dashboard is there knows exactly what machine needs maintenance at all times. This cuts down on wasting time in the field and allows everybody to be more efficient. I can see that this is almost done downloading. Once this finishes, I will go ahead and log in to my cloud accounts. Open up either Google Chrome or Firefox or any kind of web browser and navigate to Unitronics, enter your credentials and log in to your account. Navigate to device management to add an asset to the list. It is the second icon down. Click on the add to the right. What you must first do is choose the asset type that has been created. I am going to choose Unilogic Cloud Webinar from the drop down menu.
you will see that this has been created for a PLC type Unistream. This means that you will not be able to link this project to a vision unit through a router. I then need to validate my serial number. Enter in your Unitronics PLC serial number and select validate. and go ahead and select Validate. If validated, the catalog number will appear for that specific serial number. I then need to name my asset. I will name my asset Unistream Cloud Demo. and go ahead and click on Save. My device appears in my list as available. What is needed for the Unistream Next is to download the certificate and load it via UniApps. I'm going to choose the Download button. Now you will see the certificate downloaded on the bottom left there are two methods to load this certificate. You can manually do it with a USB stick in UniApps at the face of the controller if you have connection to your cloud account. However, you have the availability to do this automatically. I am going to open a VNC viewer on my PC. Connect to the controller using the same IP as the panel Ethernet and select Connect. To access UniApps, take the cursor and place it in the top most right corner of the screen and hold it for about five seconds. You will see the three option menu appear. Go ahead and select UniApps. This will get you into the information controller. Select the network tab at the bottom, and I'm going to page over to UniCloud. To activate UniCloud, select the UniCloud tab above, and then select Activate UniCloud. I'm going to load the certificate directly from my cloud account. To do this, select the load certificate from UniCloud. You must log in with your username and password. Select the username. If you would like to type in your username and password, click on the white field box here with the cursor to begin typing in your username to save time of manually punching in every character. Select OK once your username has been entered and go ahead and repeat the same process for the password. Make sure to click the field before you begin typing or nothing will show up in the box. Select OK again and select Apply. What this is going to do is validate us and make sure that we have an actual connection to the cloud account. You are then going to get a load certificate status screen and you will see from this message here that we have success. I am then going to choose Close. Select the Asset tab at the top. On my Asset Type, I can then choose to start sending data by pressing the button Start Sending Data to enable my cloud service. I am going to choose OK. And you will then see that the communication status has gone to Connected, and you will also get a pop-up window that lets you know that you have successfully changed state. I will go ahead and select Close. I will now go back to my cloud account and refresh the page. If you experience the status saying available, go ahead and click on it, select the subscription tab, and adjust the tags timer interval 
by selecting the pencil. Change this time to 10 seconds or less. I will now choose the Save button. It will prompt me with a license plan change. Go ahead and click Confirm to proceed, and you will see the subscription plan required change from startup to either basic or intermediate. Once this has done this, select Close. Wait about 30 seconds and then go ahead and refresh the page. At this point, I have the availability to pass telemetry to my dashboards once it says connected. You might get a minor or major alarm for status. This is okay. What we are looking for is uh, it to change from available to connected. In order to show this past telemetry, we can now navigate to our dashboard editor, which is the fifth icon down in the vertical toolbar that looks like a pencil. Go ahead and select this. We will create a new dashboard by selecting the plus to the right. You must name the dashboard. We are going to do on this dashboard is pull that value that is being manipulated at the project level and also the alarm that is being tripped at the project level and display it via a number of widgets. After naming the dashboard, I will name it machine data for cloud. Configure the scope of what this dashboard has the ability to see. Based on the number of organizations on the account, the number of asset types that have been created, the date range needed, and the geography desired, you have the ability to configure this particular dashboard as needed. For this simple example, we will keep the scope as default and choose Create. I now have the ability to configure my dashboard, how I would like to view the metrics that are getting pulled in. Since I have a value that is being manipulated at the project level, let's show this number on the dashboard in a number of ways. In my tools at the top, I am going to scroll over to select a radial gauge. And I'm going to drop it here on my dashboard. I must first choose the asset type that I would like to reference. This was the one we just created, which is the Unitronics Cloud Webinar. Next, I am going to choose the data that the widget is going to display. For my asset properties, I have the ability to assign a number of parameters that are cloud level to this widget. For the sake of example, I am going to choose my asset name and then I'm going to select the current value that is being manipulated at the project level to show in the widget itself. I will choose next. I am curious about the last value for on every update, so I'm going to choose last value. If I was calculating an average, if I was trying to find out the max value that has been passed, the minimum value that has been passed, this would be a situation where I would be choosing aggregated data. I then have the ability to use my analysis tools to show this data as necessary. I'm going to select Next. I'm going to pull the current value to my data and metrics. I'm going to name the widget and I have the ability to determine the aesthetic properties for sizing and color. I'll choose Next. If I want to select this widget, and jump to a different dashboard that has been created, the navigation menu is where I set this type of jump up. Since all I am doing is displaying the machine data, in this case, I'm going to select Finish.
I will adjust the size of the widget so that it makes it easier to see in the cloud. The tag for the current value will update every 10 seconds as we have adjusted it in the subscription. Now we have not published this dashboard yet. Right now it is still in draft mode. And next I'm going to display this value as a trend. Select the line graph from the tools by scrolling to the right. When you drop a line graph, there are a number of cloud level properties that are already assigned for you, like the asset ID, asset name, and date and timestamp. I will select my asset type, Medtronic's cloud webinar, and I will select the data tags for widget. And as you can see, asset ID, asset name, and data timestamp are already assigned to the asset properties. What this helps does is set up the aesthetic properties of what the trend is going to look like when it comes down to the key. If you had multiple devices shown on one trend, all of this information is going to help distinguish what device is showing what information. Under the tag data, I'm going to choose current value again, and I will choose next. This time, we cannot choose last value. If we wanted to calculate maybe an average of multiple machines on one trend, I could choose aggravated data. We are curious about the live raw updated data. Therefore, I'm going to choose raw data and select next. I then have the availability to pull that current value into my data and metrics. In the preview window, you will be given an idea of what the data is going to look like. Navigate to filters and scroll down. If for some reason you do not see data collecting in the raw data, pull down the data timestamp into the filters, select after and select last day or last week, and this will update the preview window above. Select Next. I will have the option to name my widget. I have given it the name Trend of Current Value. Depending on how many feeds, I can choose the color of what these feeds will look like on the graph. I then have the ability to determine the y-axis with the number of decimal digits. If I continue to scroll down, on these properties, I have legend options, tool tip options, and data labels. I'm going to select next. Again, if I wanted to set up navigation to jump somewhere else on my cloud account, I can set up the navigation here, but I'm going to choose finish and go ahead. I've adjusted the size of my trend to fit better on the screen. And as the raw data comes in, you will see it posted here. Now, since I also have an alarms that have been configured, I'm going to pull down an alarm widget and create an alarm table on my dashboard. The asset type I would like to reference is Unilogic Cloud Webinar. I am then going to assign some properties by opening the data tags for widget, and I will select the asset name and also geography for the location of where the machine is at. Along with the alarm information, I will choose this box. I can choose from alarm index, active alarm, severity, the timestamp, and maybe the duration of how long that alarm has been active for. Choose your desired properties and select Next. I'm going to choose the last value for this alarm. So when this telemetry updates, what I'll be seeing in my table is what the last value was. Now I have the ability to structure my table as desired. I'm going to choose the asset name and put it in the data and metrics, the geography, the severity, alarm name, timestamp, and active alarm to see if this alarm is active. 
you will see here in the data preview what this table will look like when there is an alarm on. If I choose next, I will have the ability to determine I want to name my column headers. I will go ahead and rename these one by one. I also have the ability to change colors and I'm going to go ahead and choose next. Last but not least is the navigation. If I wanted to jump to a different dashboard based on selecting this widget, I can do so. I'm going to choose finish and my alarm table has been created. I will move it a little bit farther down and adjust it so that it's easy to see. Now I can see my current value my alarm state, and anything else I would like to add to this machine data dashboard. What I'm going to do next is I'm also going to add a VNC widget so that if I wanted to operate the HMI from this dashboard, I have the ability to do so. Go ahead and select VNC by scrolling to the right and dropping down the VNC onto the dashboard. Now the VNC widget is very simple, and honestly, it leads to a little bit of confusion, but how it is referenced, I'll show you very shortly. What we are going to do is name this VNC for machine data page and simply press finish. The way that the web VNC is referenced is through the actual asset ID filtering, and I'm going to show you that right now. If I scroll down to see the VNC preview, I will expand this. Right now, you can see there's nothing there. This is because the widget does not know what it is referencing. I'm going to go ahead and select publish so that it is a global dashboard and you'll see it here in my editor. Go ahead and click confirm. If I want to see what this dashboard will look like, I can preview it here by selecting the icon right here, or I can select the first icon that says my dashboards. Right now you will see that the current value is 65. You will see that the trend is in its raw format and you will see the alarms as they update as well. Here we have the alarm state is on. It's minor and it'll probably shut back off but you might have to acknowledge it to turn it back off. As you can see, as I scroll down, VNC has no assets selected as the message. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to create an overview dashboard or a new dashboard. I'll go back to my editor, select create new dashboard, and I will name it overview. Let's just say if you had multiple assets in the field and I wanted to show them on a map, select them from the map and then jump into their actual data dashboards. What I can do is create this overview dashboard. I'll name it and select the scope and choose create. In order to show all my assets on a map, I will scroll over to the map widget. and drop it down onto my dashboard. I'm only concerned with the Unilogic Cloud asset type. So I will select Unitronics Cloud Webinar. Similar to the line trend, there are different data tags that are default for the map as well. You can see here it's the asset ID, the geography, and the status. What these pertain to is where they are laid out on the map, you actually will have a pop-up when you hover over that individual instance to show these elements. If you wanted to add another element, maybe an asset type level tag, you have the ability to do so here at the tag data. 
I am not going to do that for this example, and I will go ahead and choose next. We are going to choose last data since it's the only one we can select, and I will choose next. We can set up any filtering needed, and we can give this map a name. Click next to give it the name. We will say Unitronics Cloud and select next. I only have one asset configured, but this could be on my map of total assets with their location. Now here's where I'm going to dive deeper into the navigation portion of the menus. What I want to do is I want to select the asset from my map jump into the machine data for that particular asset running an asset type, and this is how VNC is going to be referenced. I will select the navigate per asset, I will select from the drop down machine data for cloud, and I will select filter by asset ID. Once this has been selected, I will go ahead and select finish. I will adjust the size to make it easier to view and see on the dashboard. Depending on what portion of the map I am selecting or what machine is in the map I am selecting on, if that asset idea is selected, it is going to load all of the current information for that particular ID, and this is how VNC is going to be shown. Now that I have my two dashboards created, I can preview my overview page, and if I hover over my asset that has been added here, you will see the pop-up that I was referring to earlier, where I could have also added telemetry level tags to this pop-up which is just showing the defaults here when I hover over the yellow icon. I chose my asset because of this navigation I have configured for the map. It is going to load the current machine data that is being processed to the cloud from the controller when I click on it. I can see the current value and gauge format here for 47, the trend format or day. I can see the alarm table here below. And I also have the ability to see and operate the controller directly from the VNC widget. Here's a picture of UniApps again. As I click around in UniApps, I can go here, I can select system, go to any of these options here. As I click around on my VNC widget, the PLC that is in the field is jumping to these screens as well live. So you're actually controlling the HMI from your cloud dashboard. This is the power of what the cloud offers, analyzation, control, and also organizational structure for all the users who have access to the cloud account. At this point, I am going to open it up for Q&A. Thank you. All right, does anybody have any questions? They can go ahead and enter them in into the box and go ahead and answer them as they come in.
Yes. Yeah, so uh, later today, if not maybe by tomorrow, uh, I'll make sure that yeah, it's, this uh, webinar is recorded. It should be available. Um, I believe that they will send out a link to everybody who registered for today. Uh, it just might be in the coming days uh, before it gets out to us, but I'll, I'll definitely follow up with that to make sure everybody has a copy who attended today. And the question about uh, having to set up each PLC uh, or we can log into account, uh, the account can work as one, uh, but each PLC uh, will have a different serial number that you will need to connect with in the program and then update its serial number on the cloud level. Um, so you, you can control them all from one account. It's just you'll have to uh, sync every asset from each PLC. Um, connected with it to up to the cloud. Um, so each PLC will have to be synced. Um, so that way it can communicate up to the cloud level, but you will only need one account 
um, you can multi uh, navigate through multiple PLCs. Yeah, you're welcome. And just to let everybody know, still here, um, feel free to type in any questions you have uh, about what you saw. Be happy to answer them. Uh, I'll probably stay out for about another 15 more minutes. Uh, that way it gives you guys enough time if you do have a question. That way there's no rush. Um, So I believe that in the asset times, you can go down to one second um, and that'll change it, I think, to like intermediate or advanced or something like that for the tag subscription. But that just means that, yeah, you're, you'll be taking um, tags every second. Um, you just have to be careful about how many assets you have assigned 
um, because you can eat up the 200,000 tags or whatever you're allocated for with your subscription. So um, it was just, um, yeah, the faster it goes, the more it'll take in. So, but yeah, you can do it down to, I think the minimum is uh, one second. Hey, you're welcome.
just want to thank everybody for coming. I'm going to end the webinar. You guys enjoy your day. Thank you.